What's up everybody, Gautam Sharma here from Flight Right, and in today's video I want to talk to you guys about what is in my flight bag. So if you're not a pilot watching this video, you get a sneak peek into what's in a pilot's flight bag. And if you're a pilot watching this video, well, you can always suggest things that I can add to my flight bag based on your experience. So if you're not into aviation watching this video and you learn something new from it, like you get introduced to a new item which you've never seen before until I pulled it out of my flight bag, leave it in the comments and let me know why you found it interesting. And if you're a pilot watching this video and you think I can add something else to my flight bag, leave that in the comments as well. So let's get straight into my flight bag. All right, the first thing that I wanna show you guys is my, that's my mask, is my headset. Now, this one is a Lightspeed Zulu 3 headset, and it's an active noise reduction headset. Now, headsets are of two types, active noise reduction and passive noise reduction. So this one is an a &R headset. The difference is that a passive noise reduction headset does not need a battery, and it reduces noise by snugging tightly against your ears. While an active noise cancellation headset, this one needs a battery to operate, and it's not super tight. It's, it's soft and comfortable, and you can use it for long hours, without getting a headache. So that's the biggest advantage and, and the noise reduction is impeccable in a &R headsets. Uh, so this one is one of the top of the line headsets in the aviation industry. This one's a Lightspeed Zulu 3. Uh, most people use either a Lightspeed Zulu 3 or a Bose A20. These are like the top two in the market as far as I know. I chose to go with the Lightspeed Zulu 3 and I love it. This also has a Bluetooth, uh, which means I can get traffic updates, uh, runway updates, etc. from my ForeFlight app straight into my headset. And this also allows me to record my cockpit audio wirelessly on my iPad. So this one is my Zulu 3 headset, that's the first item. The next thing that I have is also a headset. So this one is a rugged RA200 headset. This is a passive noise reduction headset. Uh, I got this from Amazon for about 85 bucks. I mostly use this as a spare headset. Now, what happens when the active noise cancellation headset runs out of battery or something goes wrong is that it switches to a passive noise reduction mode. And as a passive noise reduction headset, this one is not effective because to be a good passive noise reduction headset, you need a tight seal around your head. This one does not have a tight seal. It's super soft and comfortable. So if the battery runs out, it's gonna switch to a passive noise reduction mode and then it's gonna get terrible. So the best choice is to go for a real passive noise reduction headset in that case, if it runs out of battery or something else goes wrong. So this one is a rugged RA200. So I use this mostly as a spare headset, like I said or I intend to use it when I have to take passengers with me. And this one is pretty good as well. For the price point, this is a really nice head. Now the third item I have is a first aid kit. Now this also doubles up as a survival kit because it has got a lot of survival elements like wire saw, saber card, uh, switch knives, uh, glow sticks, fire starters, and a lot more. So it's a, it's a beautiful compact first aid and survival kit. And again, this is one of those things which we wish we never have to use in our lives, but it's always, always a great practice to carry them with you because you never know what's gonna happen next. What else do I have? Okay, this one. This, I'm not sure if, if uh, any of the non-aviation folks would recognize this. The pilot would know what this is. So this one is called a GATS jar. Not a gas jar, a GATS jar, G-A-T-S. So this one is used to inspect fuel samples before we stop flying. So each time we do a pre-flight, it's a practice to you know use this to draw fuel from the fuel tanks and see if the fuel is contaminated with debris or if the fuel has any water content in it. Because sometimes when you park your flight overnight, there's there's a great chance that your fuel is going to have some moisture or water content when you when you start it the next morning. So it's really important to check your fuel before you fly, and we use a gas jar to do that. And again, I'm going to leave links to all these products. Uh, in the description box below. So if you're interested in any of these, you can always check them out. Most of them are from Amazon. I think all of them are from Amazon. What else do I have? All right, so this is my knee board. So it's a clipboard that I can strap to my knees and it has my uh, checklist. So it's a custom made checklist that I have. This kind of has all the elements that I need in a fashion that I best understand. So it's a checklist that I have. And I also have these on my knee board. So this is a template that I use to copy airport information like the winds, visibility, sky conditions, temperature, viewpoint, ultimate settings, and a lot of those things. So these are always part of my knee board. 
which is part of my flight bag. What else do I have next? All right, so this one is a sectional chart. Uh, of course, I, I totally understand that these days nobody really uses these sectional charts unless and until our instructors ask us to do it because we learn to fly with these, but end of the day, we use one of the digital apps like ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot when we actually fly. But it's a good option to have your sectional chart with you in your flight bag because your iPad can run out of battery, your iPad can just freeze or your iPad can just shut itself down because it's overheated. You know what? You, you don't know what's going to happen to your iPad, but this can never fail you. Uh, there's no chance that this can shut itself down or run out of battery. I think it's going to happen. Of course, it's not super comfortable. Let's say you're flying and you want to you want to find out where you are. You open your sectional chart. Not cool, <laughs> but it's, it's always a good idea to have this in your in your flight bag and it's a great practice to learn how to fly using a sectional chart. And I cannot stress the importance of this one because if your iPad runs out of battery, you're in trouble. This will save you. The next thing that I have is the chart supplement of the South Central United States, which covers Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana and Mississippi. Again, this information is available on your ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot and most of this is also available on the sectional chart, but it's a good practice to carry this with you just in case you need it. Uh, this has a database of all the airports and their frequencies. Like for example, if you're flying into a new airport and you wanna know what's the tower frequency, what's the ground frequency, what's the approach frequency, you're gonna find all the details and the airport diagrams in the chart supplement. The next item I have is a navigational plotter and then I also have an E6B flight computer. Now I do have the E6B app on my phone and I also have E6B on my iPad but once again like I said it's always good to learn how to use the mechanical ones just in case your electronic ones fail. Now what happens is when you have to divert to a different airport these four items will come into play. Your sectional, your chart supplement, your E6B and your plotter. Now, for example, let's say I'm flying from Fort Worth all the way to Galveston. I take off, the weather is fine at both ends. And on the way, all of a sudden, the weather at Galveston gets worse. And I know for a fact that as a VFR pilot, I cannot get to Galveston safely and it, the weather is below VFR minimums. So the only option I have is to either return back to Fort Worth or to divert to a different airport. So when I'm doing my diversions, I would need all these things. Now this E6B flight computer will help me calculate my heading, my ground speed, uh, if I have enough fuel remaining, uh, how much time it's gonna take for me to reach my new airport, and a lot of those things, uh, this is gonna come in real handy when, when you have to do a diversion. This one is just my document folder. It just has my medical certificate, my uh, my flight plans, all my navigation logs when flying, all those things are in this. The next thing that I have is my, aha, I love this. So this is my headlamp. <sighs> okay, so as pilots, we always need headlamps. And the most important factor to see when you buy a headlamp is does it have a red light? So this one has a red, yep, it's red. And it also has a white. Now the white is needed when you're doing your pre-flight inspections to see if your aircraft is fine for takeoff, especially if it's night, you're doing your pre-flight, you need a flashlight. And why do we need the red? It's because when you fly at night, you need the red light to look inside your cockpit at the instruments. Exposure to white light for long periods of time is gonna destroy your vision. So we always use a red light to look at the cockpit instruments and the white light to pre-flight and to read your sectional charts. Now, remember, this sectional chart is gonna show densely populated areas in yellow. So if you read something in yellow with the red light, it's gonna appear clear. So you will not be able to differentiate between densely populated areas and sparsely populated areas if you're using a red light. So when you read charts, use a white light, but when you're looking at the cockpit instruments, we always use red lights. The next thing that I have is another backup flashlight. Uh, you know, in aviation, we just don't carry backups. We carry backups for backups. It's really important. So this is a backup for this. And if this fails, I still have my cell phone, which is which still has 
a flashlight. The next thing that I have is, uh, oh wow, this is my foggles. I used this when I was with my instructor and I'm doing some instrument flying. So this is gonna limit my vision and I can only see inside the cockpit. It's a good practice uh, to learn to fly IFR conditions. Of course, it's not really needed when you're flying with your friends doing a fun cross country, but I still choose to keep it in my flight bag just because sometimes my instructor suddenly is like, hey, pull out your foggles and I need them. And the last thing that I have is, no, not, not really the last thing. The next thing that I have is my ADS-B receiver. Now this is something that I made uh, by using the Stratex kit available online. Uh, it's a handmade ADS-B receiver based on all the parts you get from Amazon. So this can let me know about the traffic in the vicinity. It's gonna receive all the traffic signals from different airplanes and send it to my iPad and my fourth flight can tell me that, hey, you know, there's an airplane 12 o'clock, five miles out, thousand feet above you, something like that. So this is really helpful to know traffic around you. Uh, of course, as pilots, it's also important for us to keep our eyes open and watch for traffic, but this is just a support system, I would say, to watch for traffic. What else do I have? Okay, let's open these side zips. Okay, I have spare sort of batteries in case the battery in my headset or my uh, any other electronic equipment runs out. I have some spare set of batteries. And mostly I have stationaries like my pens, pencils, calculators and stuff. So this side, nothing so fancy. What about this side? All right my iPad. So these days when we fly, we take an iPad with us, which has a Ford Flight or a Garmin Pilot or one of these apps, which is going to give you a lot of situational awareness. You get the information in the section charts, you get the information in the chart supplements, you get airport diagrams, you get weather updates, you get traffic updates, you get so much more out of this. You know, if you have this, you don't need any of these things. These are all like backups. Like I said, if this has to fail, you know, if this gets overheated, if, if it runs out of battery, and then you need all these things, but this is one of the best things, you know, Ford Flight or Garmin Pilot, one of the best things that has happened to aviation. And finally, my logbook. I, I choose to carry my logbook with me because sometimes I forget to log time. So when I finish my flight, I just make sure that I log the time right then and there. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is all that I have in my flight bag. If you are a pilot, what do you have in yours? What is something interesting that you have in your flight bag? And if you're not a pilot, like I said, if you found something interesting, leave it in the comments. And consider subscribing to Flightright on YouTube and follow Flightright on Instagram for more aviation videos.